Hey y'all, this is uh, Kinship from the Grand Archive Discord, and I just wanted to take the time today to make a Grand Archive TTS video. At the time of recording, there is a big tournament coming up Friday and Saturday, and I noticed there weren't any TTS videos out there, so I figured I'd make one. So, what do you need for this? Well, first thing is going to be Tabletop Sim itself. If you don't have that, you're going to be pretty shot. Uh, it's usually hovers around 20 bucks on Steam, uh, but it can be lower on sale. So if you pick that up, it's going to be your first go. On top of that, you're going to need this Grand Archive TCG Tabletop Sim Workshop uh, item. You can subscribe to it here. This is what's going to allow you to actually play the game. And I will leave the link to this in the description. So, once you get that fired up, how do you play? Well, there's two ways to do it. First is you can do a single player game, which, you know, would be cool if you want to look at hands and stuff, but uh, most people can be going for that multiplayer. So your options there are you can either host a room or you can join into a room that already exists. In order to join, you can click on the server browser on the left, enter Grand Archive in the top, and then everyone that has a lobby open will be listed, which looks like there's a couple people playing right now, so that's good. So if we go into here under Create and Multiplayer, you'll be presented with some options for the multiplayer. The first one will be the server name and the server password, as well as the type. Uh, for a tournament setting, you're going to probably want this on public or invite. I just do public with password. And I would recommend that you make a password and name that are easily identifiable and that you can pass on to your opponent so that they can get in no problem. If we go ahead and step in on into here, you'll see under Workshop, uh, the Grand Archive TCG is listed. If you click that and load it up, you'll be able to see a board, and we'll get into what all this means here in a second. An important thing to note is up here you can see the name is grayed out for me. If we take a look at the board, uh, there's no like semblance of side yet, but once I click on this, I can change color or change team. So if I go into red here, I now have actions. Uh, this is really important because you and your opponent need to be on separate teams to do a lot of actions in the game. And then additionally, uh, something we'll get to is if you have a friend come in, you will need to right click on their name and promote them so that they will be able to interact with objects. One of the things you can do is you can come in here under objects, under saved objects, and then you'll be able to see all of your decks. Now you might be asking, I don't have any decks. How do I get those? Well, the easiest way is to go over to sylvie.org, which I will leave a link for this as well. And this is a website made by Pichufan, and I'll have a link to his Patreon. Uh, that's fantastic for making all of your decks. And what this is gonna allow you to do is you can look at all of the current cards that are in index. Uh, I think the, some of the Alter cards are on there as well. Alter hasn't been released at the time of recording and you can assemble decks. So I'm not going to super get into deck building in this video, if that's something you guys want to see, I guess, you know, hit me up, leave a message or something. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to go into this starter deck preview here and you can give you a sense of how this works. So up here on the top, we have the material deck and then under that with the main deck and under that, the sideboard. So, how this works is you will choose your base spirit and then your champion and then you're allowed to take any of these uh, material cards as an addition and then same for the main deck you can have up to your four copies and they'll all be listed and whenever you're finished making a deck uh, there's a button down here next to the save that is tabletop simulator and so what this is going to do is it will allow you to download this deck so once you have that downloaded, you will have a zip file that you can use. Now, where you're going to put that is going to be in your tabletop saves. Uh, under saves, I made a saved object folder. I don't think that was included by default. And I was able to put all these files in. Just unzip it, throw it in here, and then that will be what shows up in tabletop simulator. So let's go back to TTS. Talk about the game a little bit. So in your saved objects, you can take a deck out. I'm going to go with this one. So if I click on that, you can see main material and sideboard. If I drag these out, it will make little bags. And these bags are going to be where you can pull these cards out of. 
So on the mat itself, we have some different zones, which are pretty nicely marked. Um, so if you hover over these bags, you can see this is a main deck. So if I just click and drag, it will bring out an instance of the deck that we can place here. And then same for the material. So when you and your opponent have done this in a real game, uh, what I like to do is I will just take some dice and I'll show you the first key bind. So in order to roll these, you can highlight and throw them, which is pretty fun. You can also just click R and that will actually roll it for you, which is pretty great. Uh, Grand Archive rolls, whoever wins the roll is going to be the turn player. So if you are the first player, first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna come into your deck here, you're gonna do a search, and we can see Spirit of Wind is in here. So if I take this and drag it out, you'll notice this is actually flipped on the reverse side. So a couple things, uh, the reverse side's pretty important for Grand Archive. Uh, since you deal with memory. If you ever want to look at a card close up, instead of just zooming in all the way, if you hold down Alt, you will see the card. For this, it's flipped over, so if I hit Alt and Shift, I instead get to look at what's under. So super helpful if you want to actually look at your memory. That's all well and good, but uh, how do I flip that? So what you're going to want to do is just hover it and click F. And boom, there you go. So if I take this now, pretend I'm first player, I'm going to draw my seven cards. Uh, a couple ways to do this. One, you could just uh, start grabbing them. That's no good. And also, if we uh, take a look at this, this deck's all jumbled up, but uh, every time you pull this deck out, it's going to be in the same order, and that's no good. So before we even get to drawing, uh, we need to shuffle this. So how do I do that? Well, if you click R, it shuffles. When click's good enough, I'd recommend spamming it because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so once you've done that, if we look in here, we've got a different order going on. So now in order to draw, uh, one thing you can do is whenever you draw, if you click a number on your keypad, it will give you that amount of cards. So if I click four here, I get four things to hand. So I don't really want to do that. So we'll flip those over, and put them back for now. Since I'm turn player, I'm going to draw seven, so I'll click seven, and you can see now, seven cards. So the next thing is going to be paying for costs. So what we're going to do here is, if we look at this trained hawk here, that is a cost three. So I don't really just want to be chucking these cards out, right? So, so my opponent will be able to see them. So what I'm going to do instead is, before these come out into memory, I'm going to come down and I'm going to flip them with F, just like I did for the spirit. And then I'll be able to put those down. And there you go. And then same as I said before, if you alt shift, you'll be able to see them, your opponent cannot, and you are good to go there. Now, just some general things about the game. Uh, if one of your allies is knocked out, that will go to the graveyard zone down here. If you pay for a memory cost, such as materializing, so if I go for this level one Sylvie, in order to pay its cost, I'd have to banish. So what you can do here if you're using something that's not a floating memory, in your memory you can click G, which is grouping, and then you can click R to shuffle, pull one off the top, and there you go. That is your banished card. Um, other things you'll need to know, if I want to attack with an ally, say this train talk, uh, one thing that's pretty nice is you can do your taps with uh, Q and E. So normal E is the tap, and then to reverse it is Q. You could also just E three more times. I'm not judging, but you know, probably don't. And then for your opponents, if you want to declare intent, I assume you're just going to be speaking to your opponent to let them know. But say I had this gray wolf here that I wanted to attack. Well, a good way to do that would be whenever I tap, I can hit tab to show intent, which is pretty cool. See what else is important. Ah, cleanup. Let's talk about that. So, in order to do some cleanup, uh, say between rounds, one thing you can do is all of these elements. Um, I kind of want to get rid of right. If I need new things, so if I just put them all out and then highlight them and then hit delete, they're gone. 
So every time, like I said, you take something out of these decks, you get a fresh copy. So that, this is a good way to reset between rounds. And then additionally, if you have uh, sideboarding, you can take out your sideboard, find the cards you want between rounds, and then throw those in with your deck. And that's kind of how you would do that. Oop. Another call out over here. Um, this is the health tracker, if you didn't see that. I leave these between rounds because you can just have whatever damage on it for the turn and then clear it. So that's really cool. And then another feature is, I don't think I've talked about this yet. This is a buff counter. So for decks, especially like Sylvie, that have a lot of buffs, um, you can throw these on a card and that'll be kind of how you determine that. So this is a buff gorilla, for instance. I think that's kind of everything uh, that's super important. Um, there's some niche things such as searching, I guess I could talk about. If you right click on this, you see there's a search up to 20. This is good for cards like uh, Idle Thoughts that allow you to dig in for up to four cards. So if you click this, it gives you a selection. So that is nice. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, if you have any tips that I didn't get to in this, uh, feel free to throw those down in the comments, like I said. And uh, other than that, have a good tournament.